Uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation and for the opportunity to present the One World PD seminar. So uh, I'm going to be presenting some results which are joined with Stan Alama from McMaster, Dimitri Golovati from Akron University, and Xavier Lamy from University de Toulouse. So we've been working uh, for several years now on uh, ring defect for liquid crystals. And you see kind of a cute picture here. Uh, so uh, let me start by describing a little bit the mathematics, or if you want uh, the, the modeling behind pneumatic liquid crystal. So those are between liquid and the solid. They are um, kind of fluid of road-like particles and they are partially ordered. Uh, they tend to order parallel to their neighbor. So we can associate to them a director, S2 valued, we are on R3, S2 valued the director, which indicate the local axis of preference, uh, on average, the direction of alignment of the particles in your pneumatic liquid crystal. And so um, there are several, well, three main models to model this. The classical one is the osin frank model, where uh, the director should minimize an elastic energy that I wrote here. And it's, as you can see, a bit complicated because it has to account for all the possible um, motion in your liquid crystal. But uh, fortunately, uh, even in the physics literature, one uh, often consider the simple one constant approximation, where the constant K1, K2, K3 are equal to one, and all these terms nicely combined together to give you the very famous uh, harmonic map energy. So uh, uh, we are going to be handling harmonic map as opposed to in the previous talk. So here we're going to be interested in studying defects of these, uh, these, these models. So, um, as I said, the, the model, the pneumatic liquid crystal stable state would like to uh, minimize this as to harmonic map, but you have to be a bit uh, careful uh, since we're trying to model this liquid crystal. You should think always that uh, this is not an um, oriented, you should not think of it as a vector field, but really as a director field. Um, the, the direction minus n and n uh, is, gives you exactly the same physical state. So we should really think of N as not being S2 valued, but in the real projective plane, RP2. Um, so let me quickly review a result on, uh, on singularities for harmonic maps. Uh, so here we have harmonic maps as again valued in S2 or RP2. They, um, so we are minimizing basically the right Dirichlet like energy, but with the constraint of being in S2. The minimizer solve this uh, nonlinear system here. Uh, and uh, therefore some uh, singularity can occur. And uh, there is some famous work uh, that I'm mentioning here. Uh, first by Schoen and Uhlenbeck, 1982, where uh, they proved that uh, S2 valued minimizers um, are holder continuous. So that's the regularity for S2 minimizer, except for discrete set of points. So, uh, then later, Brzez Coron Lieb they uh, showed that these singularities, again, for minimizers, must have degree uh, plus or minus one, and they look uh, like this picture here. Uh, we call them a hedgehog, uh, uh, kind of a nice way for this picture here. This is degree plus one uh, singular, uh, singularity, and uh, the anti hedgehog corresponds to degree minus one singularity. And uh, but at the same time, Hart, Kinoner, and Lin. Uh, prove that for the full, complete with all these constants, all the terms involved, curl the divergence and all these straight terms and splay terms, uh, for us in Frank, they were able to show that minimizer are real, real analytic, except for a closed set of Hausdorff, one dim Hausdorff dimension zero. So still minimizer cannot have line defect. They can, that's, that's what the minimizer, uh, they will be uh, satisfying this property here. So this is very important because of the following. So what we are interested in is um, in physics, very important to study what happens when you have some, um, what they call colloids, some, uh, some uh, uh, material inside your pneumatic uh, liquid crystal. So uh, basically what we are going to look at is a, a spherical colloid, which is going to be surrounded in, uh, in, uh, in a pneumatic liquid crystal. So we have a spherical particle here that I'm uh, giving a radius here, R0. 
we are interested in understanding what this um, scoloid, how it affects the defects in the liquid crystal. So we're looking at an exterior domain. Uh, uh, we are thinking as uh, that we're going to go to a one direction. So this is really a small particle if you want in a large liquid, uh, crystal liquid. So we're assuming at infinity, it tends to an E3 direction. So vertical at infinity. And on the boundary, uh, we can impose, the physicists are able to impose, uh, uh, you know, do some chemical work here. And so we are going to impose what's called homeotropic or normal uh, anchoring, as in this picture. That's exactly this picture here. And uh, to impose it, we can do either a strong uh, Dirichlet boundary condition, where I'm imposing the director to be given by ER, x over mod x, normal to the sphere, but also uh, this is more appropriate actually for the physical, uh, how they do it, uh, a weak anchoring where we add a energy penalization where you want the director to be close to ER on the boundary of the colloid. So we are imposing in a sense degree one on the boundary of the colloid and at infinity since it has to be E3, uh, degree zero at infinity. So uh, we expect here the minimizer to have a defect uh, to satisfy this problem. Uh, so now what's interesting is um, that the physicists have observed that um, the type of defect they observe depends actually on the size of the particle, the colloid, the particle, the radius, radius R0. They observe that if your colloid is large enough, they will observe indeed, so we have again degree one, so here we expect degree minus one, they observe, they observe an hedgehog type defect. They call this a bipolar, uh, there's still some symmetry here. Well, uh, if your particle is smaller, they observe this very nice Saturn ring defect there. Yeah, uh, being physicists, they always have the chance to be able to use nice names. So now we can also talk of Saturn ring here. And uh, here we, we see here more of a quadrupolar type symmetry, which is observed for small particle. And if it's too small, they actually no defect. And so this creates some problem with the osin frank that we were looking earlier. Uh, remember for osin frank, uh, if we look at finite energy minimizer, this can only be point defect, not line defect that we corresponds to infinite energy. Not only that, but if you look at the harmonic map equation, you would not be able to see this difference between small and large radius. It's basically scale invariant. So, so how do we distinguish these two uh, phenomenon? And finally, if you look at this uh, picture here, you can see, as opposed to the hedgehog, the Saturn ring is actually a non-orientable defect. Uh, so here, by the way, this picture is really connecting to minus C3. Uh, so, and you see here that you will not be able to orient uh, this, this director field along the, among, along the Saturn ring. So um, that suggests that we should think of another, of a, uh, actually a, um, how do you call that, a relaxation, which is very nice uh, idea always, this relaxation problem. So we introduced, this was introduced a long time ago by Landau et de Gen, uh, uh, the Landau de Gen that you could think of as a relaxation of the harmonic map. So we're going to um, embed, if you want, our director theory into a Q tensor approach. So we introduce this space of Q tensor, which are symmetric three by three, traceless, you will see in a second Y, y um, um, state. And you should think of the eigenvector of this uh, tensor uh, giving the principal axis of your mnematic alignment. Remember, we are in R3 all this, all this time here. Uh, what is this correspondence with the director model? It's the uniaxial state. In the uniaxial state of your Q tensor, you have two equal eigenvalues. And in that case, the principal eigenvector will define, corresponds to what we think of as a director. And you can, in fact, rewrite your um, Q tensor in the uniaxial state in this form here. So we associate this principal eigenvector, uh, which is the, you think of it as the director. And uh, notice what is nice of this uh, um, uh, Q tensor is that we do have automatically here that the state N and minus N give you the same Q tensor. So they do represent our uh, RP2 valued map. Uh, but we have other states. There is the biaxial Q tensor where all eigenvalues are distinct. And in this case, there's strictly speaking no director, but still 
you have this principal eigenvector that you could think as an approximate uh, director. And finally, the isotropic case where all eigenvalues are equal. And uh, uh, since again, remember we are S2 valued here for N, um, uh, the, the imposing that the trace be zero, meaning subtracting actually this one third the identity means that uh, the isotropic Q tensor corresponds to the zero state. And, and that's why they're asking it to be traceless. So. In that case, there's no preferred direction and uh, the, the liquid crystal would have no alignment or ordering. So those are those three states that are present in this lambda hydrogen. And here is the lambda hydrogen energy. So this is uh, the main uh, contribution in the domain. And here I'm including the weak anchoring boundary condition where we are imposing here QR is really uh, ER cross tensor ER. It's the direction ER on the boundary. And uh, this is uh, the lambda hydrogen energy with the potential of this form. Uh, that what's important about this potential uh, is so it was related by the way to the material uh, parameter. This depends on temperature. And this constant D is chosen such that uh, it vanishes on the uniaxial state. So in that sense, again, um, this is an, an, an immersion, you can think of it as a uh, immersion in the, uh, uh, so we are making this uh, more general. So uh, um, it vanishes along the uniaxial state. And uh, also given the, the physical, it should be frame invariant, we see that's very natural that this uh, potential should only depend on the eigenvalues of the Q tensor. Uh, so again, with, I was trying to say this, you can very natural to think of it as a relaxation of the uh, osin frank or let's say harmonic map problem in the same way that the Ginzburg Landau model, you could think of it as a relaxation of the S1 harmonic map problem. So here now I'm in R2. And uh, uh, this Ginzburg Landau model was uh, introduced uh, by in the seminal work of Bituel uh, Brézé-Serin and led to all sorts of nice mathematical methods that we're going, some of them will be helpful in this, in this work. And um, so again, the idea is as epsilon 10 to zero, we are able to um, understand, uh, think of it as a relaxation of the S1 harmonic map problem. So, uh, so we're looking at this lambda hydrogen plus, as I said, we're going to impose either Dirichlet boundary condition where QR is again the, on the boundary of my colloid, I'm imposing radial boundary condition or as in this picture here, uh, W as is in the energy uh, weak anchoring. So that's the problem. We like to look at minimization of this problem. And I said, this is a relaxation problem. So indeed some uh, uh, um, previous work uh, by Majumdar and Zanescu, Nguyen Zanescu, Canavari and uh, several mathematicians uh, uh, showed that as L tends to zero, this parameter, the minimizer of the lambda hydrogen converge locally uniformly indeed to a uniaxial Q tensor uh, and this uniaxial, therefore, again, we have this principal eigenvector here, n, which is, is S2 valued harmonic map away from the defect. So it is indeed converging, in a sense, to uh, S2 harmonic, so relaxation of the S2 harmonic map as uh, this parameter L tends to zero. And we're going to use some of these results as well. So um, let's return to our problem. We're trying to see that when the uh, colloid is a big, we expect a point defect. And when your colloid is small, we expect a Saturn ring defect. Uh, so let's see that. So uh, we are again looking at the prime of minimizing lambda hydrogen exterior to the sphere, directly condition or weak anchoring condition. First thing we're going to rescale, to non-dimensionalize this, rescale by the particle radius, R0. And then we end up with this problem here. Uh, so again, we are uh, in exterior to now unit disk. We have rescaled by the particle radius. So we are prime exterior to the unit disk. The parameter C called, in fact, coherence length uh, will vary inversely to the colloid radius. So large radius means uh, C tending to zero and small radius C tending to infinity. And uh, again, we have this uh, weak anchoring boundary condition added. So our first result uh, uh, with Stan Alama and with Xavier Lamy uh, is uh, indeed trying to understand these two scaling limits. So we first study the small particle limit 
So again, R0 small means like C tends to infinity. And in this case, it's actually a nice, uh, it's a nice uh, regular problem. Minimizer converge locally uniformly to a very nice uh, harmonic problem, in fact, with some boundary condition. And we are able, this is new in the, even to the physics literature. In fact, there was some controversy, what should be the radius of these ring defect. We are able to get an exact solution. And so we are able to show that um, if your weak uh, anchoring condition is strong enough, the limit does have a ring defect and we're able to see exactly what is the radius of this ring defect, of course, bigger outside of the colloid. Uh, while if your weak anchoring is too weak, uh, then there's no defect. And so this is the picture here that I have. Uh, Dirichlet boundary condition is what I'm calling W's infinity. So we have here our colloid. We have uh, radial anchoring here on the boundary. At infinity, we are uh, imposing uh, direction, the Q tensors in the E3 direction. And uh, here, this is, if you rotate this, this point here is your Saturn ring uh, defect. Uh, and we see that as we weaken the weak anchoring, the radius of the Saturn ring uh, decreases eventually to be on the sphere. And if it is too weak, the anchoring, there's no, uh, no defect at all. So this corresponds to these two pictures here, the B and the C. Uh, we do get here this uh, quadruple asymmetry, this quadrant, uh, sorry, the Saturn ring defect in the case of a limit, right, as a small particle limit. And uh, uh, what about the large particle limit? Uh, C tending to zero, now we get really a singular perturbation problem. We are back to the result of previous result, Magenta Zarnescu and Nguyen Zarnescu and, and Canaveri for, uh, for also. And uh, in this case, because it's a harmonic map problem, basically it's much more complicated. We are going to minimize uh, among Q tensor with axial symmetry. And assuming this axial symmetry, we are actually able to show that minimizer converge to a harmonic map. And what is more difficult, uh, it's, uh, in general, we cannot do this, uh, get the boundary condition. We are able to show that there's exactly one point defect in the, which will have to be in the axis of symmetry because of this axial invariant. The point defect has to be on the axis, not on the side, otherwise you would get again, a Saturn ring. So we are able to show that indeed in the large particle limit, there's exactly one point defect on the axis of symmetry. Um, but second problem, uh, it turns out that physicists uh, observe both point and line defect, even for particles which are not very small. And this was all right in the limit. We get the Saturn ring in the limit when your particle is uh, radius tends to zero. Uh, so, in fact, uh, they observed that confining geometry or applied field, magnetic field, large enough applied magnetic field, uh, may encourage, encourages uh, ring uh, defect rather than point defect. And in fact, uh, using, we were um, using energy type argument, we were able to show that indeed in a high enough magnetic field, from the energy argument, you would like a quadrupolar symmetry, which would uh, suggest a Saturn ring. And there were also recent results by Alou Chambol and Stantechski, where they study uh, several regime of the magnetic field and get some nice gamma convergence on this. So that introduced the question. So this, we still don't know. Uh, we have not, we, we use some, uh, some argument of symmetry. Can we produce, uh, can we prove the existence uh, of a Saturn ring defect for larger particle? That was the second question we ask ourselves. Uh, by the way, notice that uh, you know, they can have, as I said, in this either Saturn ring, as you can see, this is, a numer this is an experiment. They observe both line and point defect. And if you have several particles, you can get lots of nice uh, line defect here. That's so you can see this is numerical at the bottom here, and this is uh, actually an experiment. So you do get very, very fun uh, line defect uh, in, in, uh, in pneumatic liquid crystal with colloids. So how to find solution? We're trying to find solution of the spherical colloid problem for Landau-Degene with a ring defect in the large particle limit. 
right? So there's a little problem. We saw that uh, from the result uh, I just stated, minimizer under, under rotational symmetry will converge to a single anti-hedgehog energy, uh, anti-hedgehog uh, defect with bounded energy. And uh, uh, that was under rotational symmetry. Uh, of course, the global minimizer unconstrained, we don't know. Uh, what it is, but uh, we know from the previous result uh, on harmonic maps that bounded energy means that uh, limit, uh, the limit um, can only have point defect in the limit when C tends to zero. Uh, we get this harmonic map. We should only get point defect. We're trying to get existence of a Saturn ring in this limit. The other information we have, result of Canaverian and der Degen, is that the energy of solution with line defect, so the, we expect infinite energy, but how does it behave? It behaves like the length of the defect times the log of C. So uh, this gives us the, to get this existence, what we're going to do is minimize among Q tensor with reflection symmetry, because we are trying to exclude the hedgehog. So we're going to uh, look for minimizer in a reflection symmetry in order to hope to get this Saturn ring. And uh, we have, keep in mind, since we're trying to look at minimizer uh, from the re result of Canavari, that uh, if there is a ring solution, it should lie on the equatorial plane in order to be of minimal length. So we should have this defect converging to the equator, so on the boundary of our domain as C tends to zero, which uh, makes the problem much, much harder. Okay, so what is the problem? I'm trying to minimize lambda de Gen, exterior of a spherical colloid, the Xi limit, and here we're imposing directly a boundary condition. This is difficult enough. We impose the quadrupolar symmetry, as I said, in order to get the Saturn ring. So quadrupolar symmetry uh, means that we are imposing here this uh, equi, uh, equivariance. It's a uh, um, rotation, uh, rot satisfies symmetry on the rotation about the Z axis and uh, reflection uh, with respect to the xy plane. So we're asking this uh, symmetry condition on the minimization problem. And uh, natural, bound, uh, sorry, coordinate to study here because under this symmetry we'll be able to take some, uh, uh, some looking at the slice that will reduce us fortunately to a 2D problem on these reduced slides. And the natural co coordinate to study will be um, cylindrical coordinate so we're going to be studying uh, a Q tensor uh, in this uh, slice, which will depend on rho, the distance to the Z axis and the Z axis and has the symmetry with respect to phi. And we are imposing as well that uh, we have mirror symmetry with respect to the X, Y plane for this Q tensor we're searching. Uh, and then boundary condition, as before, we are going to be imposing that it converge to a um, E3 direction at infinity and uh, be given by our radial, we're imposing here radial anchoring on the boundary of the unit disk. So this is the problem we're trying to solve. So um, as I said, because of this symmetry, this is reducing us to minimizing lambda de Gen in the upper half of a, uh, this vertical cross section I'm calling omega tilde. It's all the points uh, rho z, which uh, they have to be. So remember now I'm outside of a um, dummy, uh, dummy disk. I'm on the complement of a dummy disk. So, uh, and uh, dummy disk of unit uh, of, of radius one. So I'm asking to be outside this uh, row square plus z square was bigger than one. So if I'm away, uh, if I'm on the z axis, it's just z bigger than one and rho and z are, are positive. So uh, this uh, again, so that's what I'm trying to, I should have had the picture here. So I'm on the outside of this unit desk. Yeah. And I'm minimizing, so I'm writing the energy uh, in the cylindrical coordinate in this uh, cross section. This is my energy. Uh, and now notice, as opposed to the Gensborn lambda, I have a weight here. And this will be uh, very making it different. There's a weight here, which uh, uh, approaches uh, either one or zero if, if you are above the, uh, above the, um, the colloid. 
And this expression here is the phi derivative uh, uh, due to this assumption of the rotational invariance. So uh, well, here's our main result. So this is a result with Stan Alama, with Dimitri Golovati from Akron University, and again, Xavier Lamy from Toulouse. And uh, so we are able to find a, a minimizer with the Saturn ring symmetry in the limit C tends to zero. Um, how do we do this? So we are able to, uh, so we look at minimizer in the symmetric, right, in the symmetric setting. We're able to obtain a, uh, the following upper bound here. So again, as I said, the, the, sub, the difficulty here is the fact that we expect the Saturn ring to approach the boundary. And this is where these uh, new term compared to classical singularity in Ginsburg land are coming. Uh, so we get this upper bound. I'm going to give a little idea of how we obtain this upper bound. Uh, we obtain a matching, a lower bound, uh, but again, we expect, right, the energy uh, to blow up at the, uh, at the Saturn ring. So we actually study in, a, um, we have to be careful. So um, we take a little region, data neighborhood among uh, nearby the, the ring defect. And in our lower bound, we're able to show that most of the energy is occurring in this little delta neighborhood of the ring defect. That allows us to control the energy outside of the ring defect, but um, uh, we still have to work quite a bit. I'm going to explain this as we go along to show that uh, thanks to some, some energy estimate, we are able not only to obtain, so we are able to obtain that indeed, uh, uh, the minimizer QC of this uh, problem converges uh, in C1 alpha lock away from the Saturn ring uh, to a map which is smooth. So this is where we have to work hard here, which is smooth away from the Saturn ring. So really there's no uh, point defect. Uh, and uh, uniaxial, the limit is uniaxial where uh, the associated director is indeed S2 valued locally minimizing harmonic map, uh, which will have, therefore, as we said, a, uh, will, they will have a defect, a Saturn ring defect, but we have to work hard to show no other defect. I'm going to explain in a second. And uh, we are able to show not only that, but in a cross section that uh, the director associated N star satisfy some this symmetry property in this uh, to be in the stay in this uh, cross section. So this is uh, um, our main result. So uh, let me explain to you, you know, in order to be able to obtain this last part here, we needed to introduce uh, some new techniques to be able to um, eliminate, and that's what I want to explain, the eliminate of possibility of other topological defect, actually. So let me explain that. So first, uh, let me give you an idea of the upper bound. Uh, how do we get this upper bound? So we construct a configuration. So here's the picture. We have a Saturn ring. So this is now I'm taking a quarter plane at this point. This should be then rotated and flipped. <laughs> so we have here our Saturn ring uh, that we expect close to the, this is the boundary of the colloid. We expect it to be close. We're going to uh, construct a configuration with a Saturn ring defect approaching the equator. We have to find out uh, at which speed it's approaching it. So we let sigma to be uh, bigger than the, our current coherence length C uh, to be determined later. That's, that's our distance to the ring. And uh, we're trying to, in a sense, so we are using the fact that uh, once we slice, we are able to use directors uh, in certain places. So uh, we are connecting basically our Saturn ring. So in the exterior of a region of order one uh, nearby the, where we expect the ring to be, we are connecting to what we want, E3 direction at, at infinity. In D4 here, we're thinking of it, uh, it resembles a uh, Ginsburg-Landau vortex, but uh, the degree here would be uh, what we wanted. Uh, we expect it to be degree minus one, so that's what we're going to impose here. Vanishing at the center of D4 at some distance, 
two sigma from the equator. And we are matching it uh, again using, um, you know, good ansatz here uh, in D2 and D3 to D1 via this uh, unit director field. And uh, what's, uh, so here we're using uh, some of, uh, you know, the ginsburg landau theory. Uh, the principal contribution will come from this region, D2, uh, where we kind of see, have a vortex here, and the region D4, which is really uh, where the Saturn ring is uh, located. So let's try to understand why, where we get this um, new term, if you want. Uh, so we use polar coordinates centered at the center of the Saturn ring. So rho is one plus two sigma in that picture here, along the equator, z equals zero. So we have this, uh, I'm using now S as my coordinate centered at the D factor. And uh, then the, the contribution comes as in Kinsburg Landau from this, uh, basically from the gradient term. And uh, the previous, so now I have to go back, sorry. Uh, D2 is this piece here. This two is actually very close to the Ginsburg landau type contributions basically this uh, log one over sigma term is the contribution. And the new term is D4. Uh, so what's, oops, sorry, what's happening in this region near the, uh, um, near the Saturn ring. And it's this uh, weight here that creates something new here. The weight uh, um, uh, gives us, so when we integrate the gradient term in the D4 region between C and sigma, um, we have this distance here, one plus two sigma. We integrate this in my original coordinate and we end up with a term like this. So, and now the idea will be to minimize with respect to sigma to find out what is the location of this Saturn ring. And uh, the, this is minimized when sigma at distance uh, one over log C. So this is uh, how we end up with an energy of the form uh, that I wrote before and telling us that uh, the Saturn ring is approaching the boundary of the colloid with this uh, speed. Term. So we see that uh, the upper bound is minimized, as I said, by taking this uh, distance, uh, which uh, the distance of the ring from the equator. So now we have to, um, get a matching lower bound. And as I said, uh, we have to be careful with this, um, the fact that, so we want to show that this energy does concentrate nearby the Saturn ring. So I'm rewriting here the energy. Uh, here I just want to give the idea, we use uh, the general, uh, general bad ball method uh, from Gerard. Um, there are some, and we are using results which, so these methods uh, also, Sandy has some result uh, uh, in that direction. Uh, those results uh, were generalized to Landau de Gen, and we're using the result of Canavari and Golovati Montero for Landau de Gen. And uh, we are able to show, um, as I said, this is, this is now in reducing to 2D, so we can use other results. So we're able to show that the bad balls accumulate nearby the colloid. Uh, and remember, this is reminiscence to result of uh, previous result of Beaulieu Adigi and Andre Shafir, where they studied Ginsburg Landau with a weight. We have a weight, which is minimized at the boundary. So we are able to show uh, that all these bad balls lie uh, nearby the, the equator, nearby the boundary of the colloid on the equator. So exactly this region that, that was drawing uh, nearby this, um, where we expect the Saturn to be located. So um, that means that away from this region where we expect uh, this ball of radius delta nearby the boundary of the colloid, uh, away from that, we have an energy control. So, but it's away from this ball of radius delta, we have this energy control. So that tells us away from a region of order delta nearby the uh, Saturn ring uh, location. Uh, we do have convergence weekly in H1 lock for every delta positive. And so again, um, 
we can show that uh, uh, this limit, Q tilde, is uh, given by a uniaxial Q tensor, which uni director uh, and star, which is S2 valued a harmonic map. Um, um, but again, we're trying to get, um, so this is convergence in each one lock. And uh, we are able to also obtain additional symmetry actually satisfied by the minimizer uh, that I mentioned earlier that uh, it lies, that the image also lies in the cross-sectional plane. But remember that the point defects uh, don't cost that much. They have energy uh, H1. So uh, can, how can we be sure that there's no other singularity apart from the equatorial, equatorial ring? Yeah? Uh, one could hope that for some topological argument, we can say, no, 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 they can, we have a degree argument that can only be a Saturn ring. But um, uh, so, so let's think about this. So again, a priori, what I said, there could be some point defect since they are H1. Uh, one information we certainly have is by equivalence, if we are looking at uh, this equivalent setting, right? They must occur on the E3 axis, right? Otherwise, uh, you would get, uh, again, much higher um, energy, with infinite energy uh, defect, some ring away from the equator. And uh, so we know by equivalence, they must be on the E3 axis and by reflection symmetry, they must come in even pair on top and on the bottom of the colloid of the unit disk, uh, each, pair, each pair having the same degree plus or minus one. So um, we are able, by previous result we did with Stan Alama and Xavier Lamy, uh, combination of topological and energy argument and some nice regularity uh, argument, we can show there can be at most one pair of point defect. But there's still a possibility, there's still two possibilities. What we want, a Saturn ring in the equatorial plane with negative degree, again, to compensate for the uh, topological uh, constraint and no point defect. That's what we want to make sure it's true. Or a Saturn ring in the equatorial plane, but with positive degree compensated by a pair of anti-hedgehog degree minus one on the E3 axis. And uh, this is what we have in mind. Let's look at the two possible pictures. Uh, so this is here uh, my, uh, so this is my uh, handwritten, this is my chic uh, new world design here. Where I'm using my iPad to be able to get something not so official, let's put it this way. So um, this is the, um, the colorid, our unit ball. This is where we expect our Saturn ring to be located. We saw it to be again at distance. Uh, we expected distance log log C. And um, since we are looking at the upper half of a cross section, this domain being uh, an exterior of this disk, this thing is simply connected. So we can actually orient uh, in this uh, setting the director. And this corresponds to uh, the case where we have a negative degree ring here. Uh, remember I'm imposing a radial exterior regional boundary condition, and I'm imposing E3 at infinity. So, um, so around this um, ring, you would simply get, uh, you know, the vector field going around uh, with a negative degree. What's important is that you see, therefore, that uh, the director stays in a sense, this is the image in, of the director in S2, stays in this upper uh, cap. Uh, nearby the South Pole. Um, well, if you, uh, so this is the other option, which as I said, is very hard to eliminate. It's positive degree, uh, but with uh, right, a defect pair. So I'm drawing just the upper uh, plane. Again, I have the ER direction here, the radial direction. Uh, uh, here, since I have a defect and a hyperbolic, an anti-hedge hug, there's a change of orientation here. That means that I must have a region where the direction is in the E1 direction. This is what I'm drawing along this line here. And um, 
And you see that in order now to match, uh, so remember E3 and minus E3 are the same for the Q tensor. In order to match here to the Q tensor with direction E3, we have to uh, turn quite a bit along uh, as we cross this line. So this is the picture here, image of uh, the director on S2 in this setup here. Uh, it would cover, as you can see, uh, more. <laughs> This old, all this piece here, as opposed to just the the um, the, the, the the cap, the, the cap uh, there. So we are able to show uh, that the energy of this configuration uh, is actually stri strictly larger than the energy of the negative degree without the hedgehog. Is at, at order one, this is a much larger. Just when we were working with, this is the idea of this picture. But um, the subtlety now is to understand here, now what's the difference for the energy of, um, of this uh, Saturn ring uh, between a positive degree and a negative degree? We have to be able to show that it's actually uh, the same or, uh, you know, to order one is the same. So this is where there's a very delicate estimate that we have to do nearby for the energy nearby the boundary here of the Saturn ring and of the colloid. Uh, there's some, some new, I think, delicate estimate to show that the core energy of the positive defect is not larger than the one for the negative defect, but the, um, but the, the energy of uh, the two uh, options here uh, now are different. It is much better in that case to have this picture here uh, for, the, uh, for, the, um, for the solution and for the minimizer. And so therefore, we do get indeed uh, an, uh, what we expected for the minimizer to have one Saturn ring defect, no point defect, Saturn ring along the equator of the colloid uh, sphere. And let me finish with some uh, uh, numerical um, result. Uh, so we, we have not studied the stability of this ring, uh, but there's some numerical evidence, this is thanks to nice work of Dimitri Golovati, um, which showed that the ring uh, is stable and minimizing uh, for, uh, so for somewhat, so right in physics, they don't take limit as Q tend to infinity, you see some, is some finite quantity. And what we see in this picture is that if you're, so in any case, both the ring configuration and this is the hedgehog configuration uh, are, are stable. For a very small C, the um, point defect is indeed uh, what is expected. But, um, but uh, if C is slightly larger, then the Saturn ring defect is uh, indeed um, numerically what we see is that it is a smaller, uh, smaller energy. So minimizing for somewhat larger C. Um, and I think I finished early. <laughs> so this is it from my talk. Yeah.